Everything discussed within this video is alleged until proven in a court of law. Content warnings for this video are going to include things like harassment, doxing, threats of police violence, and minor brief mentions of child death. If any of that doesn't float your boat, feel free to click off the video at any time. Thank you. Oh no, someone who doesn't know the ins and outs of being a micro-celebrity on the internet is mad that people are talking negatively about her. Oh no, whatever she's supposed to do to get people to stop criticizing her. You know, besides stopping doing the things that people are criticizing her for. All right, with that mild snark out of the way, I just want to be pretty upfront that usually I would try to include like clips of the people I am discussing uh, doing or saying the things that I am saying that they're saying or doing um, so that you get like the context through like their own actions and words as opposed to just what I'm saying. But unfortunately, as Bugs Bunny would put it, Lauren is being kind of a stinker uh, if I do word her behavior politely. Uh, she has absolutely no idea how to be a public figure and so she is opting to use her TikTok lawyer to abuse the copyright system to threaten and silence her detractors. It's pretty annoying actually, so yeah. As you can see from the screenshot that I'm throwing up now, from the Do We Know Them podcast, this uh, lawyer whom I'm not going to name because if I don't name you, you can't say that I'm talking about you, right? Um, this uh, lawyer issued copyright strikes for uh, like only one minute of Lauren's content or something like that. Despite this lawyer apparently specializing, quote unquote, in copyright law, or at least that's kind of like the narrative I heard floating around. Uh, she doesn't really seem to understand the concept of fair use, or she does and just hopes that people she is sending these takedown notices to are not brave enough to try to appeal them or like take her to court over them and stuff like that. But here, according to this actual government website related to fair use, you are within your legal right to use someone else's work without permission for the sake of criticism, commentary, news reporting, and scholarly purposes. The amount of that person's work you are allowed to use is pretty dependent upon the circumstances, which is basically just open open to interpretation from either the platform the copyright notice was issued to or a judge if the squabbling parties end up in court. Some quick examples here of people issued copyright strikes who then lost when taken to court. Um, H3H3 versus Matt Haas in which Ethan and Ela were um, using Matt Haas's clips to criticize his content. Ethan and Ela won because fair use. There's also another case in which the one content creator had spliced together clips from the other content creator in order to make a parody video and they didn't add anything new to the content. They didn't add their voice. They didn't add any new clips, nothing. And that video was deemed fair use in a court of law. I really want to say that it was like Hugh versus Benjamin, but when I'm Google searching to try to find the actual names for this case, 99% of my searches are fucking Ed Sheeran because of that case that just went on and it's annoying. But, um, um, that's why I think it is, but if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. But I know this case exists because, like, I've heard other people talking about it. I just can't find their videos either, so I digress. Anyway, point is, people have gotten away with using a hell of a lot more than just a minute worth of content and came out completely victorious in actual court cases, so suck it. But regardless if these uh, creators would have won in their lawsuits against like the critics, uh, in the YouTube community sphere, it's actually considered kind of a massively dick move to copyright strike people just because you don't like the fact that they're criticizing you. And yes, that's why these strikes are being issued, I promise you. Not because of any bogus copyright infringement, because if that was the case, the people re-uploading to Facebook and Instagram and other like platforms, they would have been taken down a long time ago. And I'm still recommended those videos constantly from the very same accounts over and over again. Um, I don't mean to like go into like a big ass info dump here, especially as someone who actually isn't a lawyer. Um, it makes me kind of feel like a dick for trying to tell a lawyer about the law, but even the subway pigeons can see that this is just a scare tactic and doesn't actually have any legal merit. Trying to be a little off script here, but this lawyer looks like they specialize in copyright for more of like, can someone use your video for like, say you reviewed a product, can the company use your video? on their website or whatever for you reviewing the product and the answer is no, right? I don't actually think this lawyer knows much about like copyright law in terms of like commentary, which is why like she's continuously striking all of these creators despite the fact that commentary and criticism and all that stuff is protected under fair use, which she has in her own TikTok comments tried to argue that like 
this kind of stuff like commentary and everything's not protected under the first amendment which is kind of weird because opinions are protected under the first amendment so there's that um anyway going back to my script here long story short i'm not going to use uh many clips of lauren if any at all on for like her own accounts because i can't afford a lawyer so anything i say that she did or said that isn't like duetted by another creator or hosted off of her platform is going to have to be like a trust me bro kind of moment and i apologize for that but trust me bro <laughs> i'm going to discuss more of my opinions on like this lawyer fiasco later in the video so everyone unfamiliar with the situation just can have like a better context so stay tuned Hey there, I'm here to interrupt your regularly scheduled entertainment. So, Lauren the Mortician is a TikTok content creator whom I personally kind of stumbled across um, from her videos showcasing different ways that certain baby products are dangerous. Particularly, I was shown some pretty repeated content involving all the things parents were using to essentially ignore their kids while they were at the pool or the beach. Being someone who has literally watched a child drown, uh, deep water in unsupervised children in or around water is deeply triggering to me, so her content about the ways to be safer with your kids around water was especially important to me. And as uh, I watched more of her content, I was pretty horrified about all of the other baby-related stuff on the market that will according to her kill your kid honestly i didn't like watch any of her other content outside of the baby related stuff while i am grateful that her content did like introduce me to the many issues of baby related products her content was not the only place i got that education from because i like to try to do more research than what influencers offer me when i'm able and I would think that that practice of like looking more into things on your own terms would be pretty commonplace and that creators would know and acknowledge that they're not the only source of information out there and that they actually can be wrong on occasion. After all, they're only human. But it seems that Lauren believes that as a mother, which she brings that up a lot, she is more knowledgeable than someone who is a certified expert on a subject. Yeah, not more knowledgeable because of any sort of expertise or criteria involving that subject, but because she is a mom. Which, right off the rip here, I'm going to be very petty throughout this video. If you don't like that, tough shit I guess. Um, because Lauren just doesn't know how to be a public figure. If you gain credibility to a particular subject because you are a parent, why are you telling all these other parents that they're wrong? You have, partially at least, built your platforms from telling other people that they're endangering the lives of their children and voicing very big fear-mongering opinions, but as soon as someone who is a certified expert in a subject contradicts you, you have the right to be spreading any sort of false information, the fear-mongering, you have the right to do that because you're a mom? Question mark? I'm kind of smelling a double standard here, Lauren. What are you even talking about? Get to the point! Some of you might be screaming within the comments section, which I see you, I acknowledge you. So I guess let's just break down everything that's been going on with Lauren lately, shall we? As I said before, she does a lot of videos discussing how certain products on the market for babies are dangerous. Which, yeah, a lot of these products do need to be called out and off the market, etc, etc, blah, 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 blah. One video uh, in particular that she did discussed a car seat that had the ability to, like, swivel to the side so it would be easier to put your kid into the car and take them out. Lauren didn't like this car seat, voiced her opinion that it was dangerous, and not to get it. Which, she's entirely within her right not to like a product that's fine. But cue Jamie Grayson making a response to Lauren's video. Jamie Grayson is a certified child passenger safety technician, say that 10 times fast, um, and has been for over a decade. Basically, he's an expert on car seats and other devices that you essentially just strap your child into. He stated that if you use the car seat as it was intended to be used, that it's perfectly safe since it followed all the safety regulations that car seats are required to have by law. He also essentially mentioned something to the degree of not spreading false information about stuff that you don't have enough knowledge or like criteria to spread information about, right? What is not okay is I'm getting tagged all over the place on her account about car seats. I am a CPST. I was first certified as a child passenger safety technician about 10 years ago, and I am now dual certified as a CPST in America and Canada, okay? Uh, Lauren now is not a CPST. She found out today she's gonna go through the class. Great, we need more, we need more. She's intelligent. We need more people who care about this. But right now, 
her opinion on car seats and what dictates if a seat is safe or not, along with anyone else, if you do not work in this space, it does not matter. That's full stop. That's it. There's all car seats that are legal and regulated that are on the market are safe when used correctly. Okay? So these videos about the revolving seats not being safe. No, they're fine. They're fine when they're used correctly. Uh, Lauren didn't like this response, to put it simply. She took the Facebook away from her massive follower base, which is a classic influencer move to try to avoid causing a ruckus, but it backfires every time. When will they learn? Um, paraphrasing here, she basically posted, would you take baby product advice from a childless dude with a bunch of strollers in his house, or would you trust me, a mom? Um, the way she words her post here, particularly the section about the strollers in his living room and the fact that um, he has no kids made some of her critics feel some sort of way, especially with the knowledge that this creator is gay. Uh, but I'll get to that. Um, Lauren says she wouldn't take his recommendations because he doesn't have any kids and validating his decades worth of expertise in his field, which... You do you, I guess. You are within your right to have recommendations come from other mothers, sure. But why would you be following this account if you didn't want his input on these products? Oh, did I forget to mention that part? Lauren and Jamie were mutuals before this squabble started. Feels weird for you to be like following this person who has all these product recommendations only to then say you won't accept his recommendations or advice because he doesn't have kids. It's almost like you didn't care about that until he contradicted your opinion or something, right? Wild. It's almost like you won't associate with someone with a different opinion than yours. That's relevant later. Uh, Lauren further tries to demonize Jamie in her post by essentially painting him out to be kind of like a sellout, pointing out that he conveniently has links to these products he's discussing in his bio, the horror. Which, yep. Generally, when someone reviews a product, they will link it back so people can find that product better. It doesn't even have to strictly be a good review for someone to do this. Um, on my old channel, I did this review for something and put it on blast and still linked it back to the product so people can check it out for themselves. I mean, it's really not that deep, but those markers were pretty shitty. Um, anyway, back on subject. Uh, she doubles down about not accepting his recommendations because he reviews these products without having any real children to put them in and test them with, which bestie, no one is telling you, you have to take this person's advice. You don't need to try to ruin this whole dude's career because he, as an expert, disagreed with you. <laughs> also squeezing in, nowhere in her Facebook post did she mention at all that Jamie is a certified expert with a decade's worth of experience in the field that he specializes in. Almost like that would add some sort of context to why this random childless man has a bunch of baby gear and does reviews for said products. And yes, I am also aware that Lauren also didn't technically name him, but everyone who was watching the situation unfold from the beginning knew exactly who she was talking about. There really wasn't any way for her to try to say that she wasn't talking about him and that she was talking about someone else. After all, what are the odds of there being another content creator who has disagreed with her, who is childless, a man with strollers in his living room recommending baby products? Starting drama over the fact that you didn't want to see someone with a different opinion than you is frankly childish. And was this worth your entire influencer career, Lauren? Was it worth it? If the Facebook post wasn't bad enough, Lauren went after Jamie again, this time on a podcast called Dumb Blonde, in which she then spends this story of Jamie trying to rally an entire hate campaign against her over this fucking car seat spat, which... In this podcast, she again gets up on her high horse and preaches that she's a mom, so clearly she knows more. She mocks his credentials in this podcast. He has a certificate that says that he can um, talk to people about car seat safety, so I can't. And I'm like, you know what? I'm a mom. I f his car seat every goddamn day. Did he make the own certificate? <laughs> he sure printed it off on ink after the 60 hour course that he took good lord so she doesn't need no childless dude to teach her how to put a car seat in the car because it comes with a manual but i'm a mom i'm a mom i can go on youtube and look at the video of how yeah. to put my car seat in. it comes with a manual yeah so it's, 
listen, for anybody who has never put in a car seat in a car before, while it does technically come with a manual, so does your car, sometimes people just can't figure it out um, without a demonstration. I mean, your car comes with a manual too, but you still go to a mechanic to fix things, so... Or another example here, you ever see the assembly instructions for IKEA furniture? There's a reason it's a running joke like in mainstream media that IKEA shit is hard to put together even with the instructions. Uh, just because you magically knew how to install the car seat yourself, apparently, doesn't mean everyone else will and having a visual demonstration helps a ton of people. In fact, let's say that you can't install the car seat yourself for whatever reason. In my city and apparently like pretty much everywhere in the United States as far as I'm aware, you can go to a fire station and have a certified child passenger safety technician, which is what Jamie is, show you how to install the seat and even install the seat for you just to make sure it's done completely correctly or if like for whatever reason you can't install the seat yourself. A lot of like newer car seats have like this base that you just kind of like pop like the carrier into the base so you don't have to like fiddle around with the seatbelts. It's really nice actually. Um, your mommy ego is never worth your child's safety and by mocking this man, his profession, his credentials and everything under the sun essentially, you are inadvertently mocking the people who need his services. I don't know who needs to hear this but you are not a bad parent for needing help. That goes for like any kind of help really. Parenting is hard and exhausting and you should never feel alone in your struggles. Most parenting struggles are fairly universal and you shouldn't feel ashamed just because some rando on the internet makes it seem easy. That shit is filtered and edited to like more glamorous than it is real. And for the people like Lauren out there, no, being a mom does not mean that you know more than literal experts. You can know a lot about your kid, sure, but you can also be drastically and dangerously wrong about a lot too. Back to the podcast, um, this host also makes like the world's stupidest fucking comparison during like Lauren's rant about Jamie. By essentially just saying uh, a dude trying to teach you about your car seat safety is like a dude trying to tell a woman how to carry a pregnancy. Mom's it's like a dude telling you how to carry a pregnancy. Which... Ma'am, those two things do not equate to one another in the absolute slightest. I'm so confused about that comparison. I feel like I literally lost fucking brain cells when I heard her say it. I get that the podcast is called Dumb Blonde, but I thought that was like a fun, quirky name. But anyway, honestly, listening to Lauren's entire spiel like during this podcast just makes me so fucking angry, honestly. She just sounds so incredibly entitled. It's... A little ridiculous. She really does not believe that she can be wrong about something and it's really obvious from this podcast. I also believe that Lauren would have gone off on Jamie even if he was a parent because she states in this podcast that she wasn't going to listen to what some man had to say and again repeats that she's capable of stuff because she's a mom. Like moms can do shit too. We yeah. are like yeah. I'm not gonna have a man tell me yeah especially a childless man that I cannot talk about what car seat I would or wouldn't use. Yeah. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, later down the line it comes out that she has, like, this, like, anti-dad, like, narrative going on or something like that because, like, I wouldn't put it past her, to be honest. Anyway, um, I hold similar opinions to a lot of comments that I've seen floating around about, like, all the stuff involving Lauren. That it's mildly humorous, um, I know I mentioned this earlier, but... It, it's humorous that she so deeply cannot accept criticism because of her, like, mindset of, I'm a mom, so I'm right. But she also is building her career off of telling other parents, moms, that they're wrong. So, okay. Also, squeezing this in here again, because, like, I don't know where else to put it, like, in the timeline of everything else I'm going to discuss. But, um, Lauren... Uh, was like Beetlejuice summoned into like someone's post in regards to them dangerously mounting a TV to their bus above like their kids car seats and instead of like ripping this woman a new asshole like she would have like anybody else she kind of softballed her video with she said this was a one-time thing and it won't happen again and then it came out that this person was actually one of Lauren's mods so petty note but having something literally drilled into your vehicle um, makes it look like it's going to be a pretty permanent fixture to me, but whatever. Lauren not being able to accept that she's wrong about something is going to be a pretty repeated aspect of her behavior, as getting into a fight over car seats was not the only thing going on during Lauren's, like, first initial controversy here. She was also fighting tooth and nail against pediatricians who were trying to educate her about her harmful misinformation that she was spreading, particularly the detoxes that she was giving her kids after they'd been vaccinated. Now, Lauren says that she isn't anti-vax, so my question is, 
why do you need to try to give your kids a detox after their vaccinations then? Showing these like fake benefits that this detox supposedly has, it looks like a lot of that shit that right-wing anti-vax people claim are like poisoning us and our vaccines and stuff. So, yikes, Aroni. Lauren, I'm a pediatrician. Sounds like you're not anti-vaccine, but then later on in your video, you go on and you talk about supplements and detox baths, none of which have any safety profile, none of which have been regulated, none of which are safe for children. This is one of the things you talk about. Uh, it's meant to be something that is ingested. And look at these ingredients here. These are not harmless ingredients. Um, at the very least, several of these will cause stomach cramping, diarrhea, and vomiting. And at the very most, it can actually cause immune suppression, which is actually the reduces inflammation and, and whatnot. Those are not real claims. Those are false claims, which actually is ironic when the purpose of a vaccine is to induce an immune response. And again, like with Jamie, Lauren attempts to discredit her detractor by targeting their credentials. Only this time she um, has tried to belittle a literal doctor who was not afraid to sass back that she has more education than Lauren. Lauren as a literal doctor, so that was pretty nice to see. A degree in science, so I know about vaccines, and in order to be a mortician, I had to get special ones just in case I poke myself with a needle. I mean, I have a degree in science, too. We don't need to make this a pissing contest, do we, on education? Because I'd probably win. But again, during this little squabble, Lauren outweighs the knowledge of a literal, again literal, professional with I'm right because I'm a mom narrative, which is, again, just a very dangerous mindset to have. Also, remember when she was pitching a fit about Jamie linking things in his bio for people to buy? Well, as an influencer, she also does the exact same thing, except instead of regulated safety equipment that's been reviewed and tested, it's random magic potion concoctions that a random woman makes in her basement for vaccine detoxes. Again, yikes a -roni. <laughs> Did we not learn anything from the pickle girl? Really? As Lauren continued to double down against experts correcting her, especially when she was having like a baby slap fight against Jamie still, people of the internet did what they do best. They began to snoop. They pulled up tons of things about Lauren to give people a better insight to her overall character. Some of these things were to like, you know, fuel the detractors and criticize Lauren more, and some of the things were people trying to like defend her character, but you know, a lot of information was brought to light. Some of these things were already known, but of course, more tenacious individuals also started uncovering things that weren't so well known about her and making them public knowledge. Now, for the record, I don't actually follow Lauren in any sort of capacity besides her videos showing up randomly on my For You page occasionally, so I don't actually know what information out there was already public versus uh, what was kind of unearthed by people looking more into her. But one bit of information that was um, unearthed was the fact that Lauren apparently didn't work as a mortician for very long. Some claims floating around was that she was only working as a mortician for roughly a year or so, which gave people a kind of pause because they had thought that she was in the industry for far longer than that, given the way that she would present her information in her videos in this fashion of, um, I can't be wrong about this, right? Having that kind of presentation of information, this bold confidence, is how a lot of people end up trusting a lot of harmful misinformation. Like, for example, think of Fox News and all of the lies that they've told over the years with no research, no sourcing, just a very charismatic presentation and an audience who just won't look into a second opinion. This is very similar to Lauren's presentation style, except she has like this backup of, I was a mortician, except as some of her critics have pointed out, being a mortician, former or current, doesn't exactly give you like the education or qualifications for child safety and the effects of vaccines do or don't have on your kids. And again, being mildly petty, what's up with these people who've only done like a profession for a very short amount of time suddenly coming onto social media and making that their entire brand? I've mainly seen this trend like in the nursing spaces, but it's still kind of odd to me. The newer you are to a practicing profession, the more likely you are to be wrong about stuff. I feel this can lead to a lot of like misinformation spreading around or like a lot of really lame nurse finds out patient is pregnant skits. Um, but anyway. In regards to Lauren's work history, she apparently did a video in which she called her dad, <laughs> okay, to disprove the rumors, which I know it's going to sound petty again, but I've already warned you at the beginning of the video that it was going to be kind of petty, but why your dad? 
arguably your parents who are supposed to love you and support you are going to be some of the least credible character witnesses out there really. Even if you don't actually coach him into what to say to defend you, wouldn't it also be within the realm of possibility for him to just lie to make you look better than you are? There isn't anything really about your dad that makes him any more trustworthy than your own words. I'm sure there was other methods like documentation of previous work history or former tax returns or anything else to disprove the allegations against her credentials. Kind of odd that she brought her dad into this given what she does later when she gets her lawyer involved. So uh, stay tuned for that. The next thing I saw floating around about Lauren amidst this like mess that she was in was liking and engaging with politically right-wing accounts, particularly ones sprouting a lot of anti-LGBT rhetoric. Even more specifically, she was engaging with a lot of really transphobic content. You know, kind of giving her a pass on the homophobia bit uh, because I didn't have proof until now. I got shots. Is this you engaging with alt-right homophobic and transphobic content? When people were trying to call her out for engaging with this content during the beginning of her controversy, she had blocked and filtered comments mentioning these posts and her activity on them. The discovery of this information, or reminder since some sources say that her engaging with these posts was old news, made some people do kind of a double take at the situation involving J.B. Grayson with kind of a new light. Realizing the narrative she could have been trying to paint was less of, would you trust someone without children more than you trust a mom, could have possibly been more of, would you trust this creepy gay dude more than me? Also note, Jamie also pointed out Lauren's engagement with these right-wing accounts after she'd already blocked him for disagreeing with her, but um, I don't know if he was a source for these or not. Now, Lauren has denied that um, there was any homophobic intention of her statement uh, about Jamie, denouncing the accusations that she was homophobic or transphobic in any way, and tried to even defend the posts that she was engaging with by claiming they were made by someone gay, which, uh, nice, I can't be a bigot, I have marginalized friends type of response. She's also trying to defend herself by saying that she herself is bisexual, so she can't be a bigot, which, again, that doesn't amount to much. You can still be against a group of people, even if you are actively a part of that group. Candace Owens, Blair White, Caitlyn Jenner, the list honestly goes on. Off note here, but I love when people refer to these types of people as leopards eating people's faces party. Comical or not, we're not really here to discuss politics. But anyway, regardless of whether or not Lauren is a bigot is kind of irrelevant because the knowledge of her engaging with these right-wing posts is what gave her statements about a gay man different context to some people. And that sparked even more criticism of her and her character. Now, I'm not really sure who was the original source for, like, outing all of this, like, right-wing, like, engagement, right? Um, but, uh, Caffeinated Kitty ended up in an altercation with Lauren after posting a video highlighting all of the transphobic content that Lauren was engaging with, confidently calling her a turf. Lauren the Mortician is a turf. I have receipts, I have deets, and you should just go ahead and take a seat. People noticed that she was on her Instagram following a bunch of red adjacent folk, but in particular one that basically is a gay man's Tucker Carlson. And not only was she following him, but she was actively liking incredibly transphobic and hateful rhetoric and content. So, as you can see here, I decided to make a fun and helpful little list of all of the different videos I caught her liking. So as you can see, it's interactive. Which one of you is from- You touch her name, goes to her page. That's definitely her. And you got all these examples. Mm-hmm. The bottom half of the list includes It's Giving Red Pill Era Girly, where she was liking other things that sounded very conspiracy theory and very America first and very I voted for Trump. For all of the non-alphabet crew in my audience, a TERF is a fake feminist that doesn't believe that trans women are real women. One of the most famous TERFs in the public spotlight, in my humble opinion, is J.K. Rowling of Harry Potter fame. She too started with defending herself with I'm not transphobic spiels when it was first discovered that she was engaging with pretty harmful transphobic content, but now she is an out and proud turf, using her money and influence to preach about the evils of trans people and trying to help get anti-LGBT laws passed in England, which is delightful. During Kitty's uh, a video addressing Lauren's engagement with transphobic content, she mentions another issue that she had in relation to this drama Lauren had found herself in. You see, Lauren was often referred to as the Beetlejuice lady because at some point in her career, for some reason or another, people started using the classic calling card to summon Beetlejuice to get her to respond to a video. 
For the record, no, I don't care how or why this trend started. Fandoms are just going to fandom, right? But the issue with using the Beetlejuice summoning chant is that since Beetlejuice is a cult classic movie and a lot of people love it, Lauren wasn't the only creator whose fan base used that summoning chant to get her attention. Kitty was also referred to as the Beetlejuice lady within her fan base, and so when Lauren was getting into trouble, some people thought it was Kitty getting into trouble instead. She also mentions rather briefly um, in her video that Lauren was also allegedly copying a gimmick from another creator, a morbid minute from Ask a Mortician on TikTok, but as far as I can see, the accusations of copying a gimmick isn't really on anyone's like immediate radar uh, to further cancel Lauren. At this point, Lauren is definitely feeling the heat as many people do amidst the cancellation, but instead of letting the mob's torches burn out and allow them to find a new villain of the week to target, Lauren opted instead to get an attorney involved and started like just harassing people nonstop. <laughs> Basically, anybody that talked too negatively about her got copyright strikes, uh, cease and desist notices, uh, the cops sent to their house, etc. Particularly, I'm going to really highlight three um, people or groups in which Lauren and her attorney are actively harassing. The first person being Caffeinated Kitty due to her initial video about Lauren being a turf. Now, this entire situation could have been, like, really simple, right? If this is the route that you absolutely had to take when it came to this. You could have just sent your cease and desist letter and then, you know, mediate legal action if the party continued to talk about you, right? But uh, naturally, this is not what Lauren did as she began to prove herself rather unreasonable along with her lawyer. Firstly, this lawyer started issuing copyright strikes against Kitty. For the people in the audience who are not fellow content creators, YouTube in particular has this like three strike rule in which you are allowed three copyright strikes before your account is terminated. This is different from a copyright claim in which a claim just means that the copyright holder wants the platform to acknowledge their material is being used in the content. Claims affect your channel different as a claim will not take down your content or channel, but rather the claim has a power to block your content in certain countries, demonetize your content, or even allow the party claiming your content to earn revenue off of it instead of you. So I'm not really sure how many strikes um, you're allowed to have on TikTok or other platforms, but by sending out copyright strikes as opposed to copyright claims, this means that Lauren and her attorney are actively trying to silence critics. Kitty, as you can imagine, is not the only one being targeted with these copyright strikes to content featuring or talking about Lauren. As uh, you would have seen in the beginning of the video, Lauren's attorney has also been copyright striking the Do We Know Them podcast, which um, that fiasco on Twitter has been quite the sight to see. The screenshot I featured at the beginning of the video was them only using a minute of Lauren's content, uh, just to add context to Lauren and her actions. But since then, the attorney has attempted to strike the podcast multiple times, even if the original strike was appealed. She, allegedly, is even using fake names in order to reissue the strikes against the podcast when other attempts had previously failed. With how relentless this attorney has been trying to get this podcast terminated, it has turned into blatant targeted harassment. Some of these strikes uh, claim that they're using hours of stolen content, and for one strike in particular, it was on a video that did not feature nor mention like the involved parties at all. Honestly, Lily and Jesse really need to get their own legal representation involved at this point because this attorney is not only not backing down, but YouTube has been frankly complacent in trying to punish her for her actions. And this screenshot from the attorney's TikTok page proves this is done completely maliciously in my opinion. Also off script here, but um, this attorney has also posted videos claiming that it's impossible to file a false copyright strike on someone, which is laughable. It is completely laughable to lie in that degree, but okay. Especially considering she herself is now actively filing tons and tons and tons of false copyright strikes against people. Allegedly. Also, to squeeze more information in here, uh, this attorney represents a lot of big-time influencers, apparently. Um, this is the same attorney that Jen Gerard of Gerard Cosmetics is currently using to harass Paige Christie in regards to the usage of her deceased aunt's photos for unauthorized promotional materials. Um, anyway, Paige's family uh, is already done with this childish scare tactics of this lawyer trying to, like, send walls and walls and walls of text to, to threaten and scare them into like backing down. Um, yeah, they're sick of it already and already in the works of trying to proceed with a lawsuit. Which uh, again, I believe that Lily and Jesse also need to proceed with a lawsuit at this point, honestly. If YouTube won't punish this attorney for her abuse of the copyright system, maybe a fat hit to our wallet will. 
Also, again, I'm not a lawyer, but this stipulation on the YouTube claim system says under penalty of perjury when filing, you know, the claim to make sure that you're telling the honest God truth. Perjury is a punishable offense with seven years jail time and or fines, depending on how the judge rules it. Now, I do have like a minor question in regards to the possibility of legal action being taken for this situation, uh, particularly with like the lawyer representing Lauren. Right? Would Lauren be the one getting in trouble or would the attorney? Was Lauren the one who instructed this attorney to go after these people talking negatively about her? Was this kind of a stop these people by any means necessary kind of deal? Um, or is this attorney working on her own volition to get brownie points from these influencers that she's working with? Because she is also using other apparent client names in order to like harass critics, right? The reason I want to know like who would be getting in trouble in like legal sense for committing literal perjury is because we all saw during the Depp versus Heard trial uh, that Amber Heard was able to counter sue Johnny Depp on the grounds of what his attorney had said about her while actively representing him. So if this situation does land in a courtroom, would Lauren be the one getting in trouble for the actions her attorney took on her behalf? Or would the attorney be the one getting in trouble? Who knows? I just think this is something that Lauren also kind of needs to think about before things get too far with this situation. Maybe call off your attack dog before animal control gets involved if you catch my drift. Now, if you thought the shit with the bogus copyright strikes was already bad, the situation gets even worse yet as Lauren and this attorney have also used the police in order to try to scare a critic. Kitty cited in one of her videos regarding this entire mess that due to her initial video about Lauren, the police were sent to her house for a wellness check. Apparently, Jeanette saw the video where I was talking about this, which was the same day that I emailed her, and she thought it was an appropriate response to send the police to my front door in a wellness check. And the police show up telling me that Jeanette Braun sent them and that she was concerned about erratic and irrational things I was posting on social media. And I explained the situation, how I knew her name and what all was going on, and that from my perspective, they had just been used as a threat of doxing. And the police seemed to be in agreement that this was an absolutely unhinged and inappropriate thing for someone to do. Kitty says that in in response to getting these copyright strikes, she reached out to the person making these strikes because she did not know if this person was like a rogue fan of Lauren's or an actual attorney representing her. Which even having the ability to have that confusion just proves how deeply flawed the copyright strike system is. Um, anyway, the attorney apparently took this email as a threat or blackmail or something like that and called the police. While I don't believe anyone is this ignorant, but for anybody who may be under a rock, this could have been a death penalty to Kitty. Cops in America are notoriously incompetent and wellness checks have ended in the death of a person they were supposed to be checking on innumerable amount of times, really. When I first started the script, I thought it was just one wellness check called in by the attorney, but apparently with now the calls being released to the public, that is not the case. Apparently it was the attorney and Lauren herself making these calls. In the description, I'm going to link Kitty's video that has the calls on them, just so that you can listen to them in full context. These calls state things like Kitty is spiraling and having a mental health crisis and that she's blackmailing people and trying to threaten people online and even at one point saying that she was trying to rally people to go after others and hurt them and yada yada. When the dispatcher asks for like any examples of any of this, nothing is provided. In Lauren's call, she even giggles during it. Um, this girl is just spiraling. <laughs> Which, yeah, girly pop. What a way to make this seem like a totally serious and concerned report of someone's actual mental health and not at all as if you're a middle schooler who just thought of literally the funniest prank in the world. I'm grateful that neither Laura nor her dumbass attorney tried to give any bullshit examples of this supposed erratic behavior during these calls in order to try to make Kitty actually seem like she could be a danger when the police arrived, as that could have potentially really sparked the death penalty I mentioned earlier. They are both incredibly lucky that nothing actually happened to Kitty because her blood could have been on their hands. Some people have been commenting, like, asking around how this attorney and Lauren have Kitty's address in order to make these calls. The answer to that could potentially be very simple. When you appeal a copyright strike, you have to provide your personal information in the appeal, and that appeal is sent to the original person who struck your content, in case they need to send you further legal notices. If the situation landed in like a courtroom, for example, they would need like an address in order to serve papers to. But that's just a theory. I don't really have any proof that that's necessarily how they got a hold of Kitty's address. Um, 
Besides, using the copyright strike system in order to uh, terminate people's channels, using the strike system in order to gain personal information about a person for the purposes of harassment is also an abuse of said system. And why I think anyone getting strikes against them from Lauren or her attorney need to get in contact with their own lawyers at this point. There's no more like beating around the bush about it. This is fucking ridiculous. Another thought I've been having is, is this attorney going to be stupid enough to try to send the police after Lily and Jesse from the Do We Know Them podcast? Let's hope not. Or at the very least, let's hope that the podcast is using like a P.O. box or like an off-site company address to avoid something like this happening. What Lauren and this attorney have done, just calling in the fake wellness check to threaten Kitty, is f highly illegal and needs to be punished immediately. Lauren has tried to make the excuse on why she made the 911 call, first apparently denying that she ever made the call to begin with, which if that's true, whoopsie doopsie, I guess she uh, didn't know that people could get records of these calls and make them public. Uh, but anyway, her excuse was that Kitty was saying things about drinking blood to survive and eating organs and other quote demonic things. Oh, the absolute horror. But like, Bestie, you literally use the summoning chant for a demon as your calling card from a movie that is a satirical comedy about death and other demonic shit. You just have to rub two brain cells together to know that these things are just macabre jokes. Not even looking into these articles Kitty says are written about her dark humor, uh, Lauren absolutely knew that these statements she tries to cite as an excuse for the wellness check are just not serious. Kitty has also gone on to state that since she's been speaking out about what's been going on between herself and Lauren, that she's received a cease and desist notice via email. In this cease and desist, uh, the lawyer also sent it to Kitty's mother in a theater company that she used to work for. Not to mention that she not only CC'd my mommy in this and mentions my mother's like past address, but she also goes ahead and CCs a theater company that I personally don't work for and have not associated with in years and that my mother doesn't even work for. Maybe this attorney doesn't know that Kitty no longer works for that theater company, but I have no doubt that this was like an effort to get Kitty fired from a job. I'm not too sure why her mother was brought into this though, besides as a scare tactic. Another person who has elected to remain anonymous through all this had reached out to Lauren when the information about her engaging in transphobic content had first really been circulating. This person had wrote an email expressing disappointment in these allegations and wouldn't Lauren to come out and address the controversy uh, before her cancellation got any worse. Lauren took this email as a threat of blackmail and also sent a cease and desist to this person and blocked them from her pages. This cease and desist, like Kitty's, was also sent to uninvolved parties Particularly, the notice was sent to someone that was just kind of assumed to be this person's mother. Which, as you can imagine with my language, means that this was indeed not that person's mother. But the notice had a lot of personal information, so now this random person has all of this stuff about this individual. Um, so big F in the chat for this dumbass attorney. Um, maybe don't try to bring people's mothers into shit randomly. In response! to that email sent to Lauren's public email, she received this cease and desist. And in this cease and desist, not only did it list this creator, but it also listed this creator's mother. But the email that Lauren's attorney sent this to was not actually this creator's mother. So now some random third party has a ton of private information about this creator. But then again, I assume that Lauren assumes that people's parents have like a lot more sway in their lives than what they probably do, given the fact that during her controversy, she called her dad to defend her. But anyway, honestly, if Lauren would have just let everything die down on its own, she wouldn't be in this drastic career downfall. Instead of hiring this unhinged attorney to attack her critics, I think Lauren should have like actually hired a PR team. I think she would have like benefited from that greatly. One tip I see from PR people constantly is that if you can't address things head on, then just ignore them until they go away. It's worked for several creators actually. <laughs> Um, this would have been like the best move for Lauren in my opinion because when everything started, nothing she really said or did was necessarily illegal. Just kind of shitty. Her starting shit with Jamie wasn't illegal. Her sassing the pediatrician wasn't illegal. Engaging with transphobic content isn't illegal. She did not at any point during this need to get a lawyer involved. If she would have just let people have their opinions about her, no matter how much it hurt her little feelings, uh, she probably would have just bounced back from all this as people would have moved on to the, the next target. People are allowed to not like you, and that also is not a crime. 
And for the record, I do know that Lauren has mentioned that people were doxing her and having to talk to the police for her own safety, and that does suck. Don't get me wrong. Doxing is a very serious issue among a lot of creators, and I don't think anybody is really ready for that level of fame or infamy. But by making the fact that this shit is happening to you and it bothers you is only really going to make it worse. Now, where does everything go from here? Uh, I voiced my opinion on that rather thoroughly in this video. Everyone Lauren is currently harassing through her attorney need to get their own lawyers involved at this point. It in her heart to give me some advice that I should get in touch with my insurance information and provide it to her ASAP because otherwise, if I delay, I might not get covered. She also gave me a super duper scary deadline to issue a public apology to Lauren, but also make sure to take down anything and everything mentioning her across every social media platform ever. Total cease and desist. Also, I need to give her the information of anybody who's part of my team, their addresses, their emails, their social medias, like everything. And I'm not going to lie, Jeanette, I personally do not trust you with that information. So despite not having any guilt on who's part of my team, in fact, I'm very proud, uh, no. It's been pretty clear at this point that Lauren just won't be reasoned with, and this attorney whom Again, I haven't been naming because I don't want her to bother me. Uh, she also will not relent until she's punished by the law. I wish all of this had more like concrete of a conclusion, but uh, this is where I need to leave the video off for now because there's not really much else developing as far as the situation is concerned. I hope everybody enjoyed this video, so feel free to comment any developments when they do happen so I can see them. We can all be nosy bitches together. Uh, leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Big thank you to everyone for helping me reach a thousand subscribers. It means the world to me. This video, like all of my content, is brought to you by Patreon. So thank you so much to Ippo, Ashley, and Alec for subscribing. If you want to support me on Patreon, tiers start as little as $1 a month. You can find the link to that as well as shops, socials, and all the sources in the description. And with that, this is Minji signing off. Until next time. Need to be strong every breath home Cause I can't move on to